You can talk number of games, but when you look historically, obviously Yelich is at that mark, but not playing the Brewers, he didn't do it. Rodriguez back in 2007, Albert Pujols, and still we have another game tomorrow. So, Frank, the biggest difference, when you look at Bellinger, this is third season. He's about a 260 average hitter. We know in the postseason he was hitting in his two trips or his two series below 200. What's the dramatic difference in his turnaround for this season? Everything. He's just retooled everything. He's leading the league in almost every hitting offensive category. Uh, for me, it's, he's gotten more upright. He's short to the baseballs. He's sending the ball deeper into the zone. And he's always, had, for me, had the best finish in baseball. So watching this guy hit right now, he's been spectacular in April. And it's so hard to come out and hit 14 home runs in the month of April because you see guys getting hot really June, July. With the average up. Exactly. The he's hitting four, I mean, 420 something. I mean, he's having an MVP season right out of the box. And Frank, it's fascinating because sometimes you hear hitters say, well, they're letting the ball travel, they're using the whole field. Mm -hmm. Bellinger's really not. He's just pulling the ball. Uh, look at Fangraphs.com. More than 56% of the time when that ball is in play, it is to the pull field. You see it there. Uh, Frank, to your point, he just knows where the ball is being pitched. Now it seems like he's got that great sense of it, and he is just knowing how confident he is to pull the baseball with damage. He's doing that now. He's also not missing. His swing and miss rate is basically half of what it was last year, Chris. Those mistakes that we saw him make in the playoffs last year simply are not happening now. Contact percentage up 15% for Bellinger. I mean, these are Ruthian-type numbers to start a season. Is this one of the best historically if we compare with some of the great hitters, at least starting out a year? It is, Chris. You could make the argument this might be the best all-around offensive start to a year that we have ever seen. Think about these numbers. He's got more total bases right now than Babe Ruth did at this stage of the 1921 season, Frank, wow. when he set the record then. More hits than Ichiro had back in 04 when he set the hits record. More RBI than Hack Wilson had at this stage of 1930 when he set the RBI record. And more homers than Barry Bonds did in his record-setting year in 2001. Our, our Anthony Masterson did a great job of uh, looking up all those numbers for us. And again, Frank, that just tells us just how overall uh, this entire season has been and the strength of it for Bellinger so far. You know, I made a bold prediction last week. This kid could. He's on pace to hit 50 home runs. I think he could, and it helps playing in California. But watching him short uh, karate chop to the baseball with the best finish and the quickest hands, this guy is he's off the charts. But well, you're saying he'll hit 50. I, I think he's got a chance of hitting 50 okay. this year. A good chance, according to the Very good chance. We'll, we'll... That's an institution of higher learning. <laughs> <laughs> you, you should be at an institution. I, uh, I kid. I care. Uh, Freeman, uh, Freddie Freeman's 28-game on-base streak was, uh, was snapped. But let's talk about uh, the bullpen for the Braves. I know you talked about... Your guy, your your closer. I can't get him out of my mouth. I know mouth. you want him everywhere, <laughs> but uh, you know with uh, this this guy, and out for the year. Mm -hmm. AJ Minter has had a problem. His ERA is over nine. Had a, had a rough weekend. So where do the Braves turn for bullpen help? It's obvious they need Craig Kimbrell. I mean, he's a born Atlanta. Well, he's born in Georgia. Right. Uh, he played for the Braves. He started with the Braves. He lives there. He's a perfect fit for their bullpen after losing their closer to Tommy John. I mean, this guy is a lights out closer. He wants to be back in Atlanta. I think. But for some reason, Alex Anthopoulos has not pulled the trigger. I don't know if financially they want to make this move. Or, like you said, it could be a draft pick situation. Right. But they need this guy. This could be the final piece to get them back to the playoffs. And, again, that, that draft pick now, Frank, with the draft basically one month away. Mm -hmm. I think with both Keikel and Kimbrell now, teams may just say, listen, we, we want you on our team, but we're just going to wait that one extra month. That's yeah. for, the, for the Braves, I've been told by a source, that, that that draft pick matters a lot to them because they cannot spend internationally because of some violations in the past. So they really want to invest in the draft. It's, we can we can disagree with them about if it should be an issue, but they tell me it is. Yeah, but you can flip you can flip the coin there. But they've lost 11 games late. Yeah, you're right. You know, and you yeah. do that in May, you can find yourself out of the playoff contention. It's a great. So yeah, it's they a great point. need to win. They need to win now. I would I would pull the trigger. And, and we talked about how just how tight this division is. Mm -hmm. And Frank, you said it earlier. This is a division where one game could decide, and that one game could be this week. It's a yeah. That's a four team race. In, in the National League East, and uh, yes, they're Atlanta now just at 500.